coming up on Sports Extra, Barry balled out against the Eagles, but that's nothing compared to the schedule ahead for Carolina. Sylvia Hatchell is suspended for two games. What happened and how her team responded against NC State. I'm Samantha Ward in San Francisco. Panther fans have descended on the city by the bay for Super Bowl 50. We'll take you there. All that and more Sports Extra starts right now. From the University of North Carolina School of Media and Journalism, covering the full range of Tar Heel athletics, this is Sports Extra. A top 25 basketball matchup tonight. The Super Bowl coming up in six days and 70 degree weather. What a time to be in North Carolina. I'm Jordan Black. And I'm Kelly Glendinning. Welcome to Sports Extra, Carolina sports highlights, analysis, and commentary show. We're on time today, but we can't say the same for a certain basketball player. Isaiah Hicks started his first game of the season Saturday against Boston College after Kennedy Meeks showed up late to the team's morning shoot-around. Coach Roy, Wo Roy Williams took him out of the starting lineup, but Williams says Meeks' tardiness isn't too big of a deal. A handful of other players have been late in seasons past, even Michael Jordan. How would the big absence affect Carolina against Boston College? Well, the Eagles are winless in the ACC for a reason. Everyone's favorite point guard, Marcus Page, is slowly climbing out of his slump. Check out his face after he made this three-point shot. Relieved. He was four of nine from the field, and the offense gave fans something to cheer about after a bad half against Virginia Tech. Let's take a look at this possession. We're going to start off with Joel Berry, who gives it to Marcus Page. A lot of passing is going to happen right here, swinging the ball, looking for a pass to the inside. Barry is going to find Pinson in the middle, who dishes it to Johnson, out to Marcus Page, shoots the three, and misses that, but Pinson with the rebound, off to Johnson, buckets. That's nine passes total. Everyone touches the ball. That is textbook offense right there. We had a rare Justin Jackson sighting towards the end of the game. <laughs> The rare unicorn that is a Justin Jackson dunk. Okay, so he only had four points on the night, but that's the aggression Carolina wants to see from him going forward. After the win against Boston College, UNC stays at number two in the polls. The Heels' 12th win in a row is good enough for the second spot in the AP rankings. Three other ACC teams are in the mix. Those include Virginia, Miami, and Louisville, and most importantly, get this, not Duke. They are completely out for the first time since 2007, repeating Duke not ranked at all. Joining us now to break it all down is basketball analyst Luis Fernandez. Luis, a Justin Jackson dunk as rare as a unicorn. Honestly, Jordan, we may have to retire that graphic soon. By my count, that was Jackson's fifth dunk of the year. It sounds like we should be focusing on a different sophomore, though. Yep, totally. I see where you're going with this. Joel Berry, he's been on an absolute tear. Joel Berry has been a key to the offense during the ACC stretch. On top of that, he's one of the best defenders on the team. Look how physical he is here at the point of attack with a steal, finishing with an easy layup. Now, in eight ACC games so far, uh, Joel Berry has been on an absolute tear. He's got 14 points per game. He's averaging about four assists as well. But most importantly, he has zero turnovers in five of the last eight ACC games. That is incredible. The sophomore really has been standing out. You're right, and it started during the tournament last year. It looks like the game is slowing down for him. Yeah, yeah, I can't emphasize enough how important those lack of turnovers are. Which brings us to our next point, double teams. Kennedy Meeks and Bryce Johnson distributing from the post will be huge moving forward. Let's break down some plays really quick. Bryce gets the ball in the post and we see Joel James posting up with a man on him. James's man drifts now and James has a much smaller Boston College defender on him. Bryce sees the mismatch and if not for the foul, James would have finished for some easy points. Uh, next play, Johnson again. He gets the ball in the post from Barry and immediately he's double teamed. But no worries, guys. He keeps his cool, gets rid of the ball, and finds a wide open page who resets things. Kennedy Meek can learn a thing or two from this. Let's check out this play here. We have three Boston College defenders with eyes on him. You got to get rid of the ball quickly here. Instead, he's going to pivot, jump up in the air with really no place to go. You never want to see that. The ball gets deflected out of bounds. You know, you got to look for Bryce maybe in the paint. Got to get rid of the ball quickly there, Meeks. Still has a little bit to learn. 
So less turnovers, making open shots, everything is going to have to fall together for a very difficult final 10 games for Carolina. It starts tonight against Louisville. There will be six away games, two against Duke, home against Miami, and at UVA. So starting now, we'll see if this team really has what it takes to make a trip to Houston for the Final Four. Hashtag no sleep till Houston, Lewis. A sports extra trip may be in order. <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun. Former UNC pitcher Andrew Miller's jersey, number 33, is now retired. He is, the only, he is only the third player in program history to have this honor. In 2006, Miller led the Tar Heels to their first college World Series appearance in nearly 20 years. He currently plays for the New York Yankees. Women's basketball head coach Sylvia Hatchell won't be with the team for yet another game. Hatchell got a one-game suspension for this technical foul she received against Duke on January 24th after she made contact with an official. That kept her off the bench against NC State, and she'll also be serving a one-game ban handed down by the NCAA for a Level 3 rules violation. That violation has something to do with simulating game conditions with a group of recruits. So Coach Hatchell didn't make the trip to Raleigh to take on NC State, but there was a celebrity in the building. 1983 national champion guard Derek Wittenberg was in the house to cheer on his Wolfpack. Stephanie Watts was making some noise early for the heels, driving it and kissing it off the glass. And then Destiny Walker says, uh, I'd like to make a deposit, please. Cha-ching. Good thing the bank is open on a Sunday. But wait. Cha-ching Walker had one more check to cash from behind the arc. She finished with 12 points, but unfortunately for Carolina, State's checks were clearing all game long from deep as the Wolfpack splashed in 11 threes like that. The Heels fell 79-48 to the pack, extending their losing streak to six and dropping them to 12-11 and on the year. What has Woo! football coach Larry Fedora so fired up? Signing day, we'll preview it next. And Sam takes San Fran. We're bringing the Super Bowl festivities to you from our reporter on the scene next on Sports Extra. Former UNC football player Chad Scott is now the Tar Heels tight ends hybrids coach. Last year, Scott coached with Kentucky. He was the run game coordinator and worked with running backs. And Scott said, I'm thrilled to be back in Chapel Hill working with Coach Fedora and the outstanding staff he has assembled. The biggest day in the world of college football recruiting is coming up on Wednesday. It's National Signing Day. And our Sean Cavanaugh took a look at what it means here at UNC. College football recruiting has blown up into a major industry, and it all leads to National Signing Day each year. Annie Martin of the football staff is preparing for a very busy day. Well, signing Day is a big celebration for our entire staff. Obviously, it's just an accumulation of all the efforts that we've done all year um, to ensure that we've got the best class that we do for this season. The class of 2016 is currently ranked 19th, according to Scouts.com. That's what I'm talking about, baby! Yeah! Which is up from 24th in 2015. That rise might have something to do with the historic 11 and 3 season this past fall. I will say it's an accumulation of a number of things. Obviously, our, our season uh, was extremely helpful for us. That success on the field has led to a class that might not have the five star talent, but is extremely deep with 25 commits. There's not a really big signature guy. Um, like a top 100 player or a big four star, big five star, but there's a lot of really solid players who are going to be able to build this program um, coming in as freshmen. Two of those big players are Garrett Walston, who is a four star recruit and the 16th ranked tight end in the nation, and offensive guard JJ McCargo, who is a four star and rated 19th at his position. It is sure to be an exciting day for the football heels on Wednesday. In Chapel Hill, I'm Sean Cavanaugh reporting. It sure will be exciting, and while the class of 2016 looks solid, Larry Fedora and the crew are already hard at work on the class of 2017. UNC already has four commits, and they're all four-star rated. The group is led by offensive tackle Jonah Melton, who ranks seventh at his position. Melton, Lawler, and Cawthon are all in the top five in the state, regardless of position. 
While whoever signs with UNC will undoubtedly be talented, Brett Thompson reports that they likely don't have the same super connections as one current football player. The Super Bowl is arguably the biggest sporting event of the year. Millions upon millions of people tune in to watch the NFL's two best teams duke it out. For sophomore wide receiver Austin Prohl, it's become a family affair, thanks to his father Ricky. He played in four, I've been all four. The elder Prohl played in Super Bowls 34 and 36 with the St. Louis Rams, 38 with the Carolina Panthers, and 41 with the Indianapolis Colts. He'll be coaching for the Panthers in Super Bowl 50. This one feels a little more special to Austin because of what it means for Charlotte. There's a new vibe, um, there's an energy there, and everybody's having fun, and I think that's what the city you know, has wanted, and um, they deserve it. The last time the Panthers were in the Super Bowl, Austin's father was part of a pivotal moment in the game. With less than two minutes to play, the Panthers were in Patriots territory, down by seven. Panthers quarterback Jake DeLone was in shotgun when he took the snap and fired the ball to Ricky Prohl, who caught the game-tying touchdown. Obviously, Austin was happy. You know, I think just, wow. Uh, you know, at that moment, you know, I thought I thought we were going to win the game. I think everybody thought we were going to win the game. Unfortunately for the Prohl family, Ricky's touchdown wasn't enough, as Adam Vinatieri hit a 41-yard field goal to steal the Super Bowl for the Patriots. You know, it was a horrible feeling, but that's I think that's why this year has been so big, because we're finally back on top. Ricky honed his new role, coach, as Austin grew up. You know, I think he did everything for me. You know, from a young age, he always instilled many principles in me that, you know, I live by today. And Austin remains thankful to this day. I think I've, you know, God's blessed me with him. Um, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more than a dad. In Chapel Hill, I'm Brett Thompson reporting. Austin will be in the stands at Levi Stadium to cheer on his father and the Panthers this Sunday. It's been a big week for North Carolina in football, and more than that, it's been a big year. Our Michael Coe has more. He's picked again. Keekley for the touchdown. The Carolina Panthers are in the Super Bowl, and fans here at UNC are pumped. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, it's really exciting seeing how they've never won one before. Standing in the Panthers' way are the Denver Broncos led by future Hall of Famer Peyton Manning. But Panthers fans aren't phased. Oh yeah, yeah, I think we got it. I mean, Cam Newton's probably gonna end up being a Hall of Famer too. He's pretty, pretty good. The Panthers' incredible season comes on the heels of UNC's historic 2015 campaign, something that caught football experts completely by surprise. Nobody, I think probably most experts would never agree, never guess that the UNC Tar Heels would win 10 games in the season for football. So how do students feel about this high tide of North Carolina football? It's been a really great sports season for me, personally. What a time to be alive. Everyone's really excited about it. Not only is Carolina doing really well, but Duke is also losing a lot. So that just adds to it. The state of football is very good in what has become a football state. In Chapel Hill, I'm Michael Coe reporting. Just imagine the euphoria if the Panthers win the big game. That will be exciting to see. But you know, the Super Bowl is a lot more than just a sporting event. There's a full week of fun for fans who make the trip. Among those who've traveled to the left coast to take part in the festivities, Sports Extra reporter Samantha Ward. Welcome to San Francisco, home of Fisherman's Wharf, Alcatraz, and Super Bowl 50. It's a week before the game, but the city is already full of fans anticipating the big game. I spent my first day in the Bay exploring Super Bowl City in downtown San Francisco, where fans gathered for live music, food, and entertainment. They have a lot of booths, they have a lot of games, um, different like bars and things of that nature. Um, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the vendors have like virtual reality games and things of that nature, and it's just like uh, they're gonna have a concert here, at any given time, they're gonna have different people performing, and so something's gonna be going on all week and just like in celebration for, for the game. For the next week, the city stage will be hosting artists Matt Nathanson, One Republic, The Band Perry, and Alicia Keys. And even before the Panthers had made it out to the Bay Area, their fans made their presence known at the festivities. Well, we were watching a video of their bus like pulling off to the airport this morning and I almost got teary just because it's so exciting that they're coming out here and that they get to do this and they've like, you know, put up with a lot of stuff and they've come a long way and it's 
it's really exciting to see it actually happening and get to say like we have been with them in their worst season and we get to be with them in their best season. Stay tuned for more excitement from the Bay as the Panthers get ready okay. to tango with the Denver Broncos. In San Francisco, I'm Samantha Ward reporting. Samantha will report all week from the site of the big game on Twitter, Facebook, and on our sister shows, Carolina Week and Carolina Connection. Double the trouble, double Welcome the fun. How UNC's most dynamic duo is crushing the competition next. Ranked UNC women's tennis team was in action Sunday afternoon, squaring off against another top 10 squad, Texas A&M. Ashley Day and Chloe Olette Pizer sealed the doubles point for the heels, toppling the Texas team 6-1. It was certainly a lazy Sunday as both teams had a 40-minute delay waiting for umpires to arrive for the single session. But the delay didn't affect Whitney Kay. The senior was more than okay, cruising to a 6-3, 6-1 win and helping Carolina sweep the Aggies 4-0. Let's now go live in studio to Rivers Upchurch. He's going to tell us about the undefeated Tar Heels, not only the women's team, but also the men's. That's right. Thanks, Jordan. On the court, you might know Robert Kelly and Brett Clark as the number one doubles duo in the whole country. But I wanted to find out what makes them such a dominant team. Since the day Brett Clark and Robert Kelly were paired together, they knew their games would be a great match on the court. We play pretty similarly, so the transition was um, probably easier than it usually is when you switch partners. Uh, so that works really well, and um, I think, I think uh, our success on the court has shown that. After a stellar first season together, their bond off the court was what made this duo special. We've become so close that we can kind of be at a dinner with people or be in a group and when someone says something we kind of give each other a look and we know exactly what the other one's thinking and kind of just smile and um, no, nah, it's a really cool relationship. I know we were talking over winter break uh, when we hadn't seen each other for a while. It was like a weird feeling because it seemed like we spent every day together because um, it was really mostly us two traveling together so it was kind of weird not being with them for a while. As their friendship has grown stronger, Kelly and Clark have learned to trust one another when the pressure is on. If I say that he's going off the rails, that means he is going off the rails instead of being like, look, man, you focus on yours, I'll focus on mine. We kind of have this cool relationship where we can tell each other when, when we're not meeting expectations. I decided to put their knowledge of each other to the test with a round of the newlywed game. Robert, what is Brett's favorite food? <sighs> Um, I mean, this could depend when and where. I'm gonna go with uh, chicken parm. No? Nuggets? Chipotle. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Space out on you. Oh, that's bad. That is bad. bad. He has like coupons, like $300 worth of coupons, Chipotle. <laughs> Clark and Kelly were instrumental in Carolina's upset of number seven Illinois on Saturday. They helped Carolina win the doubles point and both won their singles matches in straight sets. The Heels' next challenge, Sunday against number two, Oklahoma. Rivers, I hope he took you to Chipotle after that. Tennis expert, Rivers up church, thank you. UNC Gymnastics lost to George Washington in Carmichael Arena on Saturday, despite a season high performance as a team in all five segments of competition. It was the first clean meet of the season with zero falls by the heels. Morgan Lane was second in the all-around competition. Balance Beam was the heels' top event with all five gymnasts earning season-high scores. Even with great performances, Carolina lost by less than seven-tenths of a point. The Tar Heels will return to competition Saturday against Pittsburgh and NC State. Moving on to the UNC women's rugby team, they opened their season Saturday and controlled the field from the start. Yes, you're reading that correctly. The women's rugby team shut out the University of Tennessee, beating the Vols 131 to zero. To put this performance into, into perspective, during last year's matchup between the Heels, they beat the Vols by a mere four points. Side note, the Heels' record margin of victory is 159 points. 
There were plenty of emotions at Cory Natatorium on Friday. It was senior night for the swimming and diving teams. The seniors' families joined them on deck to celebrate before the meet. Among the 20 graduating seniors, seven are All-Americans, but two top opponents, UVA and NC State, couldn't care less about senior night. The Heels would go on to lose three of the four meets, winning only five of 32 events. The Heels were demoralized by these ACC powerhouses. With only a few weeks left until ACC's, the Heels will need to get back on track as they'll be facing these opponents again very soon. Both men's and women's lacrosse teams will be starting their seasons this Saturday. With both teams coming off heartbreaking losses in the NCAA tournament, the Heels are looking forward to dominating this season. Let's start with the ladies. The Heels lost to Maryland in the national championship last year, if you recall, and are working even harder than ever to get to Philly to win that title. They lead the nation with nine preseason All-Americans and have one of the best attacks in the country. The defense is the only area where the Heels have little experience because of four key defensemen who left. But despite that, the Heels are coming in ranked number two overall. Now to the men, the Tar Heels are hoping to build off the momentum and success from last year where they made it all the way to the quarterfinals but also lost to Maryland. The Heels lost five of their starters, including two of the most prolific scorers in UNC lacrosse history. The Heels are ranked sixth in the country and like I said, they kick off their season this Saturday against Michigan at home on Fetzer Field. Kelly, do you have a jersey? No, why? Because I need your name and number. <laughs> That pickup line is awful. So we'll show you how this kind of pickup is better next on Sports Extra. It's basketball season at UNC, and that means all eyes are on the number two ranked Tar Heels. Caleb Water Waters tells us about basketball players at Carolina who don't play for the fame. At UNC Chapel Hill, the varsity program has enjoyed decades of prestige and national attention. But what about players not named Paige or Johnson? Take UNC sophomore Matthew Beatty, for example. Beatty is one of thousands of students who participate in pickup basketball. He says the gyms get busy this time of year. Just the culture of being excited about basketball, especially when winter comes around, the gym seems to always be packed because people kind of get basketball fever and just want to be in a gym. Whether it's Woolen, Rams, or Fetzer Gym, there are almost always games being played on campus. UNC alumnus Reggie Hinton agrees that pickup basketball is popular here and gains popularity during the college season. I mean, what's pick up basketball if you're not trying to imitate something that you saw on TV the night before? So I definitely think that it does peak um, during the college basketball season, more people are interested. Woolen Gym is so popular, it was even recognized in an article published by Grantland in 2015. Beatty says the popularity of pickup contributes to a high level of competition. All uh, right, Rams, occasionally you'll have to wait a little bit and it just gives you an incentive to win there because if you lose, you know you're going to be sitting out for a game or two. Hinton says pickup's popularity isn't confined to the UNC student body. I think the, the unknown piece that I spoke to briefly is how many employees actually participate in pickup basketball. And there's a strong following on Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday. They call it the Noontime Hoops Crew, and they play faithfully. No matter the weather, no matter the time of the year, they're there. Basketball at UNC can be for anybody. Well, in gym, for example, isn't just for the experienced basketball player. I mean, hey, if I can do it, so can you. In Chapel Hill, I'm Caleb Waters, reporting. Well, that was pretty impressive. Caleb just made that shot at the end. Who knows, maybe he's the newest member of Blue Steel. <laughs> we'll see about that. Kelly, I know that we both don't have the most hype, but have you ever played basketball? I did not ever play basketball, no, I did not. I have to tell everyone my most embarrassing secret. That one time I played, I made it in the wrong basket and I left crying. So if you're ever trying to get to me, you can talk about that story. <laughs> and the worst part was that the team was Duke. That's why it was just so bad. I played for Duke. No one wants to say they did that. Well, that does it for this edition of Sports Extra. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.